improvement in food resources introduction dear students we know that for the growth development and health of our body we require food as our population is increasing land for house and industry is also increasing which results in decrease in cultivable land in india there has been a four times increase in the production of food grains from 1960 to 2004 with only 25% increase in the cultivable land area our scientists are busy in efforts to improve production from agriculture and animal husbandry we have two major revolution for this demand the green revolution which contributed to increase food grain production the white revolution which has led to better and more efficient use as well as availability of milk due to green revolutions our natural resources are getting used more intensively this is causing damage to our natural resources to the point of destroying their balance completely we all know that cereals such as wheat rice maize millets and sorghum provide us carbohydrate for energy requirement similarly pulses like gram chana pea matar black gram urad green gram moong pigeon pea arhar lentil masoor soybean provide us with protein while some oil seeds like groundnut sesame castor mustard linseed and sunflower provide us with necessary fats likewise fruits vegetables spices provide a range of vitamins and minerals in addition to small amounts of proteins carbohydrates and fats for animals some fodder crops like barseem oats and sudan grass are raised as food we also know that different crops require different climatic conditions temperature and photo periods for their growth and completion of their life cycle there are some crops which are grown in rainy season called the kharif season from the month of june to october some of the crops are grown in the winter season called the rabi season from november to april farming practices can be divided into three stages the first is the choice of seeds for planting the second is the nurturing of the crop plants the third is the protection of the growing and harvested crops from loss thus the major groups of activities for improving crop yields can be classified as crop variety improvement crop production improvement crop protection management crop production management dear students as we were talking about the various needs of improvement in food resources come let us learn more about crop production management 
crop variety that can give a good yield is selected from varieties of strains of crops by breeding for various useful characteristics such as disease resistance response to fertilizers product quality and high yields first method of incorporating desirable characters into crop varieties is by hybridization hybridization refers to crossing between genetically dissimilar plants hybridization may be intervarietal between different varieties interspecific between two different species of the same genus or intergeneric between different genera second method of improving the crop is by introducing a gene that would provide the desired characteristic introduction results in genetically modified crops cultivation participates and crop yield depend on weather soil quality and availability of water since weather conditions such as drought and flood situations are unpredictable varieties that can be grown in diverse climatic conditions and tolerant to high soil salinity have been developed are useful there are varieties of factors for which there is need for crop variety to be improved some of these factors are higher yield improved quality biotic and abiotic resistance change in maturity duration wider adaptability desirable agronomic characteristics in india there are small to very large farms small farmers have less land money and access to information and technologies than big farmers there is a correlation between higher inputs and yields the financial condition of farmer decides purchasing capacity for inputs which in turn decides cropping system and production practices therefore production practices can be at different levels no cost production low cost production and high cost production practices nutrient management dear students as we need food for our growth and development plants also require some minerals and nutrients for their growth come let us learn more about nutrient management in plants plants require nutrients for growth and development There are 16 nutrients which are essential for plants. Nutrients are supplied to plants by air, water and soil. Air and water are sources of nutrients. Air supplies carbon and oxygen. Hydrogen comes from water and soil supplies the other 13 nutrients to plants. Amongst these 13 nutrients, 6 are required in large quantities and are therefore called macronutrients. The other 7 nutrients are used by plants in small quantities and are therefore called micronutrients. Deficiency of these nutrients affects physiological processes in plants including reproduction, growth and susceptibility to deficiency diseases 
to increase the yield the soil can be enriched by supplying these nutrients in the form of manure and fertilizers manure dear students we know that to increase the yield the soil can be enriched by supplying these nutrients in the form of manure and fertilizers manure contains large quantities of organic matter and also supplies small quantities of nutrients to the soil manure is prepared by the decomposition of animal excreta and plant waste manure helps in enriching soil with nutrients and organic matter and increasing soil fertility and the soil structure manure increases the water holding capacity in sandy soils in clay soils the large quantities of manure allow drainage and avoid water logging problems based on the kind of biological material used manure can be classified as compost vermi compost green manure fertilizer fertilizers are commercially produced plant nutrients they supply nitrogen phosphorus and potassium fertilizers are used to ensure good vegetative growth leaves branches and flowers giving rise to healthy plants fertilizers are a factor in the higher yields of high cost farming fertilizers should be applied carefully in terms of proper dose time and observing pre and post application precautions for their complete utilization due to excessive irrigation fertilizers get washed off and are not fully absorbed by the plants this excessive fertilizer then leads to water pollution continuous use of fertilizers in an area result in loss of soil fertility because the organic matter in the soil is not replenished and microorganisms in the soil are harmed by the fertilizers used organic farming is a farming system with minimal or no use of chemicals as fertilizers herbicides pesticides etc these cropping systems are beneficial in insect pest and weed control besides providing nutrients irrigation dear students we know that most of our farming gets water from rain but what will happen if it does not rain or there is very less rain we have to make arrangement to irrigate the crops the technique of providing water to crops in the fields by means of canals reservoirs wells and tube wells etc is called irrigation irrigation is important for the following reasons supply of essential elements germination of seeds growth absorption of nutrients the design equipment and technique of replenishing the soil water deficit by applying irrigation water is known as irrigation system there are four types of irrigation systems wells canals river lift systems tanks cropping pattern 
different ways of growing crops can be used to give maximum benefit. There are three main methods of cropping patterns, mixed cropping, intercropping, crop rotation. Mixed cropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land. This reduces risk and gives some insurance against failure of one of the crops. Intercropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field in a definite pattern. Crop rotation is the growing of different crops on a piece of land in a pre-planned succession. Depending upon the duration, crop rotation is done for different crop combinations. When we look around the field, we find that crops are infested by a large number of weeds, insect pests and diseases. If weeds and pests are not controlled at the appropriate time, then they can damage the crops so much that most of the crop is lost. Weeds are unwanted plants in the cultivated field and compete for food, space and light. Weeds take up nutrients and reduce the growth of the crop. Therefore, removal of weeds from cultivated crops during the early stages of crop growth is essential for a good harvest. Crop diseases are caused by pathogens such as bacteria, fungi and viruses which can be present in and transmitted through the soil, water and air. Weeds, insects and diseases can be controlled by various methods. One of the most common methods is the use of pesticides, which include herbicides, insecticides and fungicides and are sprayed on crop plants or used for treating seeds and soil. In agriculture, product storage losses can be very high. Factors responsible for such losses are biotic, insects, rodents, fungi, mites and bacteria and abiotic, inappropriate moisture and temperatures in the place of storage. They include strict cleaning of the produce before storage, proper drying of the produce first in sunlight and then in shade and fumigation using chemicals that can kill pests. <laughs>